Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'm going to be overviewing these two MSI Radeon R7 250X graphics cards. Um, box is pretty simple and plain, nothing amazing. Now the graphics card is very underpowered and we're going to see that in the benchmarks. I'm going to explain you benchmarks and everything later in the video. First I'm going to show you the graphics card itself. So. As I mentioned, the graphics card is MSI Radeon R7 250X, looks like this. In terms of inputs, outputs, it has DisplayPort, full-size DisplayPort, full-size HDMI port and DVI port. So pretty much everything you need for a budget card. Now, nothing on the top, not much here except for the 6-pin power. So strangely enough, they decided to go with the 6-pin power and strangely because you're going to see in the power draw later on in the video why I don't think they actually need that 6-pin connector, but anyway. And here's kind of a plastic shroud and an aluminum fins behind it with little fan to cool everything a little bit down. And yeah. As I mentioned to you already, it's very underpowered graphics card, but uh, don't take my word for it. Have a look at the results yourselves. Okay, so here's basically overall scores. Now on the left is uh, where you should be looking at, and that's 3D Mark Firestrike, Combined Graphics Physics, 3D Mark um, Overall, so Skydiver, Cloudgate, iStorm, Performance Test 8.0, Metro Last Light, um, power usage, everything that you need is in this chart. So if you want to pause the video here and have a look and compare it yourselves, do that right away. Next, I'm going to show you the overall benchmarks. So I was comparing that with the GTX 760 that I had at the time, 4 gigabyte version. Doesn't really matter, although the MSI R7 is 2 gigabyte uh, GDDR5 version, and even in Crossfire, they actually will be sharing that. So two, two gigabytes, two gigabytes, four. But in any test that I run, four gigabytes wouldn't matter. So you can safely take this out of the equation and just consider for the raw um, graphics um, power basically from the GPU. So as you see, GTX 760 is faster than the Crossfire. Of course, single card is lagging way behind. Performance test 8.0 shows even better result for GTX 760 and not a great scaling and I'm going to show you that in detail a bit later, why not? And Metro, Metro Last Light 1080p, everything and max with the Crossfire just, just, just shy of playable. GTX 760 is fine as you see nearly 30 FPS average and a single card is not playable at all. Well, obviously the resolution and settings are on the highest so you would be expecting these results from the single GPU for sub $100 or pound or euro mark but anyway where it gets a little bit interesting um, power usage by the way before I go into more detail the GTX 760 consumes a bit more quite a bit more by about 25% than the crossfire of the MSI R7 250X and obviously 250X in single mode is slightly less. Now as you see the gap is becoming less and less. The reason for that is because on the full load with the proper CPU load it actually had, would have to be a little bit more. I was testing Metro last light for this so I presume you could find a better benchmark where it would be tested even more. But back to the point, the graphics card would not consume more than about 70, 80 watt. So I don't know why the power connector is needed, but anyway, it's better to have one than not, I suppose. Performance test, that's where the results are a little bit interesting. And I'm not gonna go for the graphs, I'm gonna go for actually raw data. If you look at the DirectX 9 simple, you look at the scaling from the Crossfire and single, not great at all. DirectX 9 Complex, a little bit better. DirectX 10 and 11, much, much better. So I don't know whether it's just this test is optimized this way, but it seems like DirectX 9 is not great at the scaling and DirectX 10 and 11 is actually quite good at that. So maybe that's why a performance test is here 
lagging behind because of the DirectX 9 and obviously overall things such as uh, physics core or combined score I would not look into because the CPU was the same and you can just exclude that I would just look at the graphics course to compare these uh, graphics cards so anyway these are the scores these are the charts everything's there and they are speaking for themselves um, I put something there on the right it says what's used per point slash FPS less is more um, not really great um, to show you what what in real world would actually happen but just in case you're interested it's there and it's in raw data on the right here now that's about it let's go back to conclusion right guys and I'm back so I hope you didn't mind the very quick uh, skim through all the benchmarks and everything I'm not doing an in-depth review or anything like that simply because this is a budget graphics card at best and now I'm going to explain to you what I think about it as you've seen from the benchmark results in the single mode it's not great maybe if you're playing something like 720p games nothing too demanding you'll be fine on the medium slash high settings depending on what game you're playing and how well optimized it is but anything above that and you're pretty much screwed if you're going for the dual card setup 1080p medium settings most games should be okay especially if they are new games if they're DirectX 10 11 optimized but here's the catch if you can afford these two graphics cards you can afford also something like GTX 760 because at the time of this video GTX 760 is actually the price of these two graphics cards and actually even less in some cases so simply what I would recommend is go for GTX 760 or something similar from AMD if you are into AMD camp now this is my one of the first AMD graphics cards in a good while and I must say I enjoyed using it it was a nice refresh to jump back to AMD drivers have a look how they changed and unfortunately they haven't changed that much but yeah I will be staying in NVIDIA camp unfortunately simply because I need the CUDA acceleration for encoding my videos and just because it worked great so why change anything but back to this graphics card if you're really really desperate for um, simple graphics cards low budget things like that fine why don't go for AMD 7770 or something like GTX 750 Ti something similar obviously slightly higher price grade but much better performance would I recommend this graphics card absolutely not simply because it doesn't produce great performance good performance or even reasonable performance and you're actually paying quite a bit for it considering what you get out and what I wanted to mention very important thing I'm testing these two graphics cards on my rig so that's obviously the Xeon 1230 version 3 CPU um, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM SSDs running you know the computer is not bottlenecking basically so this graphics card is maxed out on my PC even if you had something much much more powerful probably wouldn't get better scores than that now saying that most people who would buy something like this would actually be looking into dual core or at best dual core and hyper threading setups so your performance would be way way different from mine and it just simply wouldn't be playable so overall guys if you want something that's actually value for your money GTX uh, 750 Ti from Nvidia or whatever alternative you can get from AMD and you'll be set to go if you want to go for Crossfire I don't see real reason why you should do that simply because once again you can get GTX 760 at the moment which is the same price or even cheaper on the market and get better performance than these two graphics cards granted a little bit more power consumption but you know you can tune all these things and you can adjust for your own liking and by the way another thing that I didn't like about this graphics card never mind the looks it's not a, uh, the as you see not a great looking graphics card it's very simple very straightforward plastic shroud aluminium um, cooler and that's it 
but the worst thing is the actual fan because this fan gets very very loud under under lows temperature wise this graphics card is okay at medium to low usage scenario when it's used to its max it's really really loud and when you're considering crossfire out of a question um last thing i suppose to the plus of this graphics card just just to finish with the positive note it doesn't require any crossfire bridges so you simply plug in the graphics card into the pci express slots that you have on your motherboard configure through the driver whether you want a single mode or crossfire mode motherboard and the drivers will take care of the rest so you don't need to to use any physical bridges where in sli mode you obviously need to use an sli bridge so that's the difference and that's a nice thing about a graphics card like that that you don't actually need the physical bridge but that's it so yeah guys um that's my thoughts and the performance overview of this graphics card if you like the video click the like button and subscribe i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it informative and yeah thanks for watching have a nice day